Does your organisation need more nurses? Struggling to connect with RNs where they spend time? Budgets are tight, there's a scarcity of applicants, and using travellers can cost up to an additional $150,000 per year. It's time for a superior solution. It's time to work with the experts. Like us. Since 2019, healthcare providers throughout the US and Canada have successfully engaged and recruited thousands of candidates using nurse recruitment experts' three-step advertising, screening, and consultative process. We help healthcare providers reach further with their advertising, discover hidden gems, and mobilize the power of their employer brand in nurse recruitment. With results-based pricing and no long-term commitments, we are the most cost-effective and low-risk partner for your nurse recruitment needs. So why not take your nurse recruitment to the experts? Visit nurserecruitmentx.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Patrick Teeley. I'm Chief Revenue Officer with Nurse Recruitment Experts, and we are a boutique nurse recruitment RPO offering targeted nurse sourcing strategies, strategic marketing, and pre-qualified nurse candidates. So if you're curious to know more about that, send me a message on LinkedIn or reach out to us and uh, we can tell you more about that. So we're here today to talk about 2024. It's almost October, if you can believe it. And uh, we thought it was timely to start thinking about nurse sourcing strategies for the next year. So to do that today, we're going to explore the favored talent acquisition approaches taken by a couple of leaders from McLaren Healthcare. McLaren is a 13 hospital system based in Michigan. So we have joining us today, Jennifer DeSanza, the talent acquisition director with McLaren and Cynthia Johnson, a recruitment manager. Welcome Cynthia and Jennifer. Thank you, Patrick. Thank thanks. you so much. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. We're excited to get your wisdom, your ideas and your, your plans for 2024. So let's jump into some questions and let's start with your advice to aspiring TA and HR professionals in healthcare. How would you, what advice would you give them for their careers to get ahead? Jen, do you want to take off with that one? Sure. So uh, Cindy and I followed actually probably a very similar path, um, both of us to reaching our leadership roles. So our answers are going to be incredibly similar on this. So um, for both Cynthia and I, I know to reach our leadership roles, we were just the loudest people in the room. Um, so that would be my advice to you is if you want to be a leader, you need to make yourself known within your organization. You need to speak up in meetings. Um, if that's something that makes you nervous, I used to be very afraid to speak up in meetings. I have that fear no longer. I have no problem speaking, um, but practice it. Come to meetings prepared ahead of time. Know the agenda, kind of develop your thoughts. You want people to know you, know your point of view, know your voice. Um, also, I know that it can be hard to find the time, but volunteer for extra projects. So I was always looking to step up and do things outside of the scope of my role. So I'm now in my role as director of talent acquisition at McLaren. Um, previously, I was a senior recruiter. Uh, I was in a senior recruiter role with the organization for about four and a half years, and I just constantly took on extra projects. So once the role of director opened up, pretty much the whole organization knew my name because I'd had a hand in so many different things. Uh, Cynthia was the same way. So Cynthia was also a senior recruiter and Cynthia, I'll let you tell your own story. Um, but when the manager role opened up on my team, it was a very obvious choice for me to bring Cynthia onto the team because I'd always heard her. I'd always seen her name. I knew her work. So she was a leader before officially getting the title. And I think that if you're looking to go from individual contributor to a leadership role, that's what you need to demonstrate. The first time someone takes that risk of giving you the opportunity, they need to have that confidence of the work you've already demonstrated. I'm taking a risk here and bringing in a new leader, but I've seen what they can do. They're already kind of a leader. They just need the title. Mm -hmm. And that's what Cynthia, if I can give you the kudos, that's what Cynthia was doing mm -hmm. and how she ended up as the manager on my team. Um, so Cynthia, I know I'll, I'll let you kind of chime in. You had a lot of other great insights on achieving a leadership role in HR. 
Yeah. And to kind of piggyback off of that, um, you know, when when you speak to taking on extra projects and doing things outside of your scope of work, it's also important to um, have the the greater good of the organization in mind. So um, when we're speaking to representing uh, an organization that has 13 hospitals, we have other subsidiaries that are not hospitals as well. But, um, you know, we each worked for a separate subsidiary of McLaren prior to coming onto this team and representing the organization overall for nurse recruitment. And in our roles we had prior, we had our jobs at our specific subsidiaries, but every time we got into those meetings and we were the loudest person in the room, it was with the greater good of the organization in mind. Mm -hmm. so, um, it is really important to to showcase that and um, you know that kind of that uh, speaks volumes when you want to be recognized for opportunities of of promotion and growth. Well, that's all really great advice. Thank you for sharing all that. Hopefully, that's helpful to people. Now, um, and here you are. You're become the loudest people in the room, maybe, and you're on doing a webinar with us. I love it. That's great. So. Um, in your role as director and recruitment manager, what are some specific things that come to mind that are working for you now in terms of recruitment strategies? Sure, yeah. I'll let you take this one to start then, Cynthia. Sure, I think that there's quite a few things here that um, we use as strategies on our team, but developing that eye for value proposition is one of the most important pieces, I think, to um, marketing your positions. All of our recruiters work really hard um, to develop that unique um, and compelling employee value proposition for each of those opportunities that they have available. Um, you know, not only to make McLaren stand out as the employer of choice, but um, each of our subsidiaries and hospitals has unique benefits and opportunities available, and and they um, work work really hard to uh, you know sell that to candidates and um, and make you know those opportunities in that market they serve known. So um, I think that that's huge in um, you know strategy for not only getting those applicants to apply, but also securing them through the interviewing process, through the offer process, and then bringing them through the doors um, on their first day. Yeah, it mm -hmm. has to be something of interest to people, but also something unique that's going to mm -hmm. grab their attention and keep their mm -hmm. attention. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. we also, um, you know, when developing our team, we have speed at utmost, um, you know, top of mind at, at all mm -hmm. times. Um, when Jen and I did create the process uh, flows for our team, um, we wanted to do so in a way to ensure that candidates have contact with the recruiter as fast as possible. So um, our, our goal is to reach out to candidates within one business day of their application. Um, the process that we've kind of outlined and put in place sometimes allows those candidates to um, even get that, that touch from us even sooner. So um, awesome. timelines sometimes from application to um, phone screen to, to interview to offer could be all within the same day with mm -hmm. uh, the process flows we put in place. Um, wow. I love hearing that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's a very competitive market and, you know, the faster you get a candidate interested, um, you know, it, it decreases that chance of them um, applying to other positions. So speed is the name of the game on our team. Fantastic. Great. So what do you think is going to become more important in 2024 as you think about the strategies that are working now and the challenges you're facing? What's going to be on top of mind for 2024? So I think something that Cynthia and I have really been focusing in on is on the other side of recruitment is retention. Um, mm -hmm. So our team has has really developed, as Cynthia spoke to, an incredibly tight process and timeline, getting our candidates through the process and in the door. But then on the other end, if our leaders can't keep the hires, we're just spinning our wheels. It's like putting water in a bucket with holes. Um, so those two things go hand in hand. So we're really looking to get down to the leadership level at our hospitals and talk about retention, what are the dynamics of your unit, what are your challenges, why are you losing people? Mm -hmm. And on the other side of that, we're really looking to develop our nursing leaders. Um, we do have a lot. We've had a couple of cases where a candidate has said, I want to work for your hospital because I want to report to X, Y, Z individual. So when people, mm -hmm. uh, probably any recruiter has heard the phrase that individuals don't leave companies, they don't leave jobs, they leave their leader. 
It's all about that culture in your leader. So to ensure the success of our recruitment and retention, we're really going to be looking in on the professional development of our nursing leaders to create a strong, supportive culture for those nurses that they feel from the very get go when they speak to that leader, they want to work with the leader and then they come in the door and they feel successful and supported. Well, that's great. And those leaders need support and education, right? In order to they be do. supportive and, and mm-hmm. strong leaders. That's great. That's good advice. Awesome. And on the note of retention, that is a really a key issue. And we just a week ago released our nurse um, nurse retention report 2023. So I'm going to put that in the in the chat and uh, people can uh, check that out as well. It's on our blog. So go to our blog and you can uh, find our nurse, re- nurse retention report 2023. Okay, awesome. It's there on the screen. Um, next question, what emerging technologies are you keeping an eye on these days and thinking about maybe implementing down the road? Jen, I'll take what you take away with that one. You had really good sure. points we uh, spoke about prior to this. Yeah, and it was a conversation that we were actually having with our VP the other day. Uh, so f- for me, I... I think any TA leader is we get a lot of advertisements. We get a lot of um, outreach from other companies trying to sell us products. And I do get a lot of outreach from AI companies in recruitment. So that's something that I've had my eye on. But I, I do have a very strong feeling that when it comes to nurse recruitment, I don't think that AI really quite has the place that it would in the more higher volume type of recruitment. With us, with nursing, um, we don't want anything uh, ruling out a nurse candidate. If you're viable, we want you. We're going to talk to you. So we've got our eye on AI, but we don't think it really has its place in nurse recruitment. Um, another technology that this is going to probably date me, but it's going to be um, chat GPT, where I'm like, what are you? Why are you? What is this? Um, but trying to obviously it's impacting all industries. And something that we're looking at is is using it to help us write our employer value proposition. Oh, sure. um, help us craft the language. Help us help us with that aspect because a lot of the times in TA, yes, we do have the support of marketing, but Cynthia and I, we kind of have to be uh, marketing, IT, uh, finance. We have to be everything at once. Mm-hmm. So any help that we can get from technology, we're going to take. So we're looking at you know, hey, can we use Chat GPT to help us? write job descriptions or in value yep. propositions you know how yep. can we leverage technology to make our jobs a little bit easier on that front well i know when i've used it when i've thrown <laughs> something in to see what i can come up with i'm always shocked at like why didn't i think of that like this is these are some interesting uh yeah. concepts that come out of there so why not see what could be offered great yeah and kind Anything of piggybacking else? off of that a little bit um you know going back to the last question using the ai as well for something that we want to focus a little bit more on and focus on now but continue to do in 2024 is that candidate experience you know potentially mm-hmm. using ai to make things easier for candidate applications um you know it, it, we want to provide that white glove treatment um application to walking through the door. So um, using that, those technologies to make it easier on, on our end, but the candidate end as well, um, is something that we're keeping our eye on. Oh, that's great. And well, and you already talked about the speed and that obviously ties into mm-hmm. candidate experience. Mm-hmm. They want to see things uh, move move forward quickly. We see that from our applicants. They, they really uh, are attracted to uh, the value proposition of things moving quickly and efficiently. So interesting. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And Patrick, one more thing I wanted sure. to just drop in there before we move on. In case any recruiters are not using it, I would hope they are, but texting seems uh, like a, a silly thing to throw out there. But if you are not already texting candidates, you got to start doing it. Um, I know a lot of my recruiters who have been in the industry for a long time when I said you have to text, they were very resistant to of it. Course. Yeah. But we see the most phenomenal turnaround time to reach candidates, especially nurses, mm-hmm. because nurses, if you think most nurses have a job right now, so yeah. they're not just sitting around waiting for their cell phone to ring or checking their email. They're not checking their email. They're not checking their email. Checking their email but <laughs> they have their cell phone in a locker. They can look at it in you know breaks on their shifts. And if they get a text message, how quick is it for them to just fire yeah. back? Mm-hmm. And we use a lot of also automatic schedule, like, what is our platform once hub, Cynthia? Yeah, yeah once self-scheduling. Hub. Self-scheduling. And that's something that we use a lot of. So we are, we like to use technology not to remove the human element, but to assist the humans moving the process along, to free up their time so that they can engage. 
and that increases the candidate experience mm -hmm. as well if, mm -hmm. if, you, if they're feeling reached out to that's great okay awesome those are really good uh, suggestions for folks so again think about 2024 what are some workforce challenges that you're seeing and you think are going to be growing and on your plate for the next year and what are you doing now to prepare for that mm -hmm. who would like to take that one go ahead jen <laughs> Thanks, Cynthia. So, I mean, we all know that there's a shortage of nurses. Mm -hmm. So that's the very obvious answer is surprise. That's going to continue next year. It's not going away. Um, but the other continuing challenge is not only is there a shortage of nurses, but there are a shortage of clinical educators to train the next generation of nurses. Mm -hmm. So the issue is compounding upon itself. Um, so something that we're looking at at McLaren is, first of all, making sure that we have a very strong pipeline and relationship with every single school within our region. Mm -hmm. um, we know, again, there's a shortage of nurses. Any brand new nurse coming out, we want them. They're ours. Um, but the other thing we're looking at is how can we engage our current clinical leaders to possibly look at instructor roles at the local community colleges. Mm -hmm. So our school can, our edu our institution can, partner with those educational institutions to support their program so they can take more students. But in turn, we've built that relationship and become the employer of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're looking at. There's a, a school right down the road from us on Monday. I'll be going there, launching a new program, having a, a signing, a big ceremony where I'm going to be talking to them about, hey, do you need some educators? We have oh. some great folks at our hospital down the road who might be able to join your staff on a part-time basis. Alan, you're right. Those relationships that they're building at in the nursing school and the education phase are are they're strong to continue forward and build loyalty among among the students. So that's a, a great place to start. Great, thank you. Other strategies or um, challenges and and uh, things you're doing to prepare for those for next year. So everything is going to be a challenge. Yeah. I mean, ev we're we're marching uphill here. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other other biggest challenges that I'm really looking at, and this is not something that we're even going to solve next year, um, but would be what I consider the child care crisis mm -hmm. um, within health care. Mm -hmm. Our nurses work second and third shift. Um, mm -hmm. We did see that during COVID, a disproportionate number of women were the ones who left the workforce and have right. unfortunately not completely returned to it. And in the healthcare care sectors, particularly nursing, it is predominantly women. So what we've seen is compounded with the lack of nurses, now the lack of child care, it just all snowballs. Um, so McLaren is also participating in some local initiatives um, with local ordinances and local government to understand the challenges of why can't we open a daycare here? And, and going all the way up to the state level, I'm on a committee to see, mm -hmm. can we remove some of those barriers? And can we even explore potentially opening our own daycare centers on site? What would the risk of that be? Is that something that we can do at our facilities? Because we're never going to be able to staff these second and third shifts if we don't have the child care structure in place for the nurses. Um, so will I solve that in 2024? If I do, I will tell everyone. Uh, I we'll probably won't. But baby steps, and that is something that we're looking at because I think that yeah. that's a huge issue for our workforce right now. This is a good example of while you're dealing with the day to day issues and day to day challenges and thinking ahead weeks and months and maybe next year, but this is a bigger project, but it, it's also important, right, for everyone on the team mm -hmm. to contribute ideas and, and, and flow those up to the leadership for longer term planning. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great yeah. example. Awesome. Cynthia, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I think you covered it pretty well, Jen. Perfect. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're always continuing to try to, um, you know, advance and, and perfect little pieces of our processes, reviewing job descriptions, you know, mm. taking a look at the market. You know, we um, represent McLaren Healthcare, which is all over the state of Michigan, a little bit outside of that. So, you know, the, the markets in each of those areas is a little bit different, too. So kind of pinpointing. Mm you know, where are we strong? Where do we need to put a little bit more work into as far as competitive wages, competitive, um, you know, those perks, the child care um, benefits and, and those other things as well. Um, what, what can we do to be the employer of choice in those areas? So, um, you know, it, there's there's lots of things that we're looking at and trying to continue to um, perfect. Everything is a challenge in re recruitment with healthcare, but I think, Jen, you uh, covered the two biggest ones that we have mm -hmm. been uh, looking at. Well, those are great examples. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that case, then I want to move to the last question. And this is our favorite question. 
Uh, and I'd love it if both of you have input on this one, but share with us your biggest nurse recruitment secret. What do you have to share? I mean, for this, this question for me was probably one of the easiest ones to answer. And I don't know if it's, it's typically the answer you receive, but um, you know, when Jen and I created this team, it was important for us to have um, individuals that we brought on that were smarter than us in some areas. Um, in, in not, uh, not everybody can be perfect at everything and every topic in every area. So um, our secret to having a successful nurse recruitment team um, is having recruiters that are passionate about their work um, in the company that they represent and building that team that focuses on um, collaboration with each other when needed and not competing against each other. Um, there's no one person that's really going to be great at everything, like I said. So our you know, biggest secret uh, from my perspective was finding people that could represent um, McLaren, my team, um, who are experts at different things, put them all on the same team and work together with that one McLaren approach. And we had the same answer on that. We really awesome. did. It's, it's about having the That's right good. team and the mm -hmm. right process okay. as well as the right process. Mm -hmm. So the team we built were recruiters that were already mm -hmm. at other McLaren subsidiaries. So they were already established successful recruiters. We were incredibly lucky to have them join our team, but it's taking the right people and the right process and marrying that together. Mm -hmm. So our process, as Cynthia mentioned, it is based on speed, but it's based on high levels of communication, candidate to recruiter, to hiring manager, to HR staff. We over communicate. We are incredibly detailed and we have so many SOPs and process flows, but that's because we run a very tight ship. So nothing will ever slip through the cracks. So it's about having a thorough documented process and a passionate, intelligent team. And to anyone who wants to be a leader, always hire people who are smarter than you. It makes you look good, but it also helps <laughs> for the success of the team. Cynthia is my manager because she's smarter than me in a lot of areas. And I don't, I'm fine saying that. And she helps lift the team up. But like Cynthia said, we have some recruiters who are far smarter than both of us in other yeah, areas. We, and we both call uh, many individuals of our team on a regular basis that have been with McLaren longer mm -hmm. than we have or been in recruitment longer mm -hmm. than we have to get, you know, their expertise in some topics and some areas as well. So, um, you know, we, we share um, the passion across across our entire team and, and each and every person on our team, we work really hard to make them feel valued, important, because they are important. Without um, mm -hmm. them, we would be missing, you know, very important pieces of information that Jen and I just don't already have. So, yeah. Wow. That's great. That's fantastic advice. And it sure sounds like your team is lucky to have you both as leaders. <laughs> so that's wonderful. And uh, so thanks so much, both of you, for your time today. We appreciate you doing some preparation to think about this and take the time to do the, the call. And uh, this podcast will be on our podcast channel, Nurse Recruitment Secrets. So you can find it on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, mm -hmm. and uh, other podcasts as well. So I encourage people to, to listen into our, our podcast series as well about nurse recruitment secrets. So thanks very much for sharing all of your tips and advice and your nurse recruitment secrets. Much appreciated both. Hope you have a great weekend, everyone. Thank we'll you. you. Have a great Thank weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.